What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. I um, wanted to make a quick video talking about the news yesterday that Adobe is contributing to Blender's development fund. So the announcement went out on Blender's website yesterday that Adobe is joining the development fund as a contributor. And um, so all sorts of reactions came out of that. And I just wanted to uh, kind of weigh in on that and also just talk through what exactly all of that means and uh, kind of some of my feelings on it. All right, so first off, how much are they contributing. So if you go to the Blender Development Fund page and scroll down, you can see how Adobe is now listed on this list under a corporate gold level. So a corporate gold level based on the development fund page, the corporate memberships page, is saying their corporate gold level is 30,000 euros a year. So basically what that means is that means that Adobe is contributing 30,000 euros a year to the development fund. So when groups contribute to the development fund, what they're doing is they're basically contributing to the development of Blender. This is not them purchasing any part of Blender or really having any stake other than they are um, um, donating and funding the development of the program. So now some people might argue that that gives you a little bit of control over the direction of the program. Personally, I think that's a little bit silly. I mean, you've got groups like Facebook and NVIDIA, NVIDIA that I think have even a higher level than that, and they're not really affecting the direction of Blender. So I don't think that's really something to worry about. So if you dig a little deeper, there's actually an excellent video from Rob over at Decoded talking through why um, Adobe contributing to Blender is not that big of a deal. I mean, it is in the sense that they're supporting what Blender is doing, but it's not in the sense that it doesn't give them any kind of control. So um, excellent video. You should definitely go watch that. In addition, there's also a Twitter thread from one of the developers that's worked on Blender about exactly how everything works from an ownership standpoint and other things like that. I think a lot of people are kind of afraid that this means that Adobe is trying to like acquire part of Blender or control the direction of Blender, and I just don't think that's true. Personally, for me, I think that A, this is... This is for a company like Adobe, 30,000 euros a year, um, I don't know what that is in dollars, but that's basically a drop in the bucket of their marketing budget. So I do think part of it is a marketing piece, but I think more than that, it's kind of an indicator that Adobe sees Blender as kind of an up and comer and um, a group that they're taking seriously in the industry. So I think it's something where they wanna get behind that. Um, you can kind of see that as well because they've released a couple different Blender add-ons in the last day or so um, that give you the ability to A, use sub substance files in Blender. I will link to this in the notes down below, by the way. We might do a tutorial on it later, but for now, you can check out the Substance channel and you can see how they released a Substance 3D add-on um, that allows you to use Substance files inside of Blender. And then they've also, they've also released an add-on that allows you to import uh, Mixamo files in the Blender. So Southern Shoddy did a video about this yesterday, which I will also link to talking about why that's a great thing too. So personally, I think this is great as well because what it does is it allows you to use some of the tools that Adobe has built. Um, in conjunction with Blender. And I think there's kind of this misconception out there, at least to me, um, I, I know that Blender is open source and the and the community is very pro open source and I think that's a very good thing. Um, I think Blender is protected from outside influences in a way that I think a lot of other programs maybe aren't. And so I do think it's important for Blender to be able to work with companies like this because at the end of the day, not every program, not every company is gonna be able to go open source. And I know Blender's done a great job of bringing a lot of these different tools in and building them natively, but sometimes there are gonna be external tools that are a little bit better. And and for Blender to be a serious player in the marketplace, it's at least gonna have to be able to kind of integrate with them in a way, um, especially if those programs are willing to play within the uh, licensing requirements of the different add-ons that come into Blender. So overall, for me, I think this is a very good thing. Um, so there's an interesting thread over on the uh, Blender Artist Forum about this, and there's all sorts of different opinions in here. So. <laughs> So there's opinions everywhere from this is really great to I wonder what their motivation is. It's not altruistic. I, I, I think most companies and most programs are self-serving. And I do think that Adobe is definitely looking to get something out of this, but I don't think it's necessarily control over Blender. I think it is, like Rob says in his video, a way for um, them to 
them to still advertise their products to Blender users. So do I think that this is something where Adobe is going to go open source and get rid of their subscription models and all of that? Absolutely not. But at the same time, I do feel like this is something where they're trying to integrate and they're seeing Blender as a serious player in the marketplace. So I, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, I'll link to all of this in the notes down below. You can kind of follow along. So I'll link to all of this in the notes down below so you can kind of follow along and, uh, you know, kind of draw your own conclusions. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think about this. It's definitely an interesting development. And um, if nothing else, personally, I think it's a validation that Blender is a tool that's being taken seriously. But love to hear what you think. So leave a comment down below. Let me know. And as always, thank you for taking the time to watch this.